Summary of Centuries of Success Lessons from the World's Most Enduring Family Businesses By William T. Ahara The Family Business Boom The family business arguably dates back to when Abel took care of the flocks and Cain tilled the soil. Today, more than 75% of all the world's business is conducted by family enterprises. While the family that works together may not stick together indefinitely, family leadership can be a solid path to corporate longevity. Yet, only about a third of family businesses survive the transition from the first to the second generation. Only about 12% reach the third generation. The odds get tougher, with only 3 or 4 out of a 100 businesses continuing from the third generation to the fourth. While that may sound like long odds, family businesses actually have proven more enduring than other types of companies. The number of family-owned businesses worldwide has grown from 10 million to 20 million in the past 15 years. Consider the Tercentenarians, a group of English family firms that have thrived for at least 300 years. Family businesses have several advantages. They tend to think long-term, share values and maintain ownership in a limited circle. They often make decisions faster and, even over long stretches of time, they preserve their entrepreneurial spark. Case History, Marquisi Antinori, Italian Winemakers If you had visited the Antinori clan in Tuscany in the 12th century, you would have seen relatives strolling about as the proud masters of the castle of Cambiate, near Calenzano. The family later moved to Florence and joined the Silk Guild, the Wool Guild and the Banker Society. More importantly, in 1385, Giovanni di Piero Antinori enrolled in the Vintners Guild. That was a most memorable vintage because the wine business is still a going concern. In 1966, Piero Antinori, a young, inexperienced manager, took over the winery. Avoiding the succession battles that rend many family firms, his father decided at age 68 that it was time for the next generation of leadership. He handed the business to Piero and his brother, Lodovico. Part of the family's 25th generation to work at the winery, Piero recommitted to quality. He instituted new aging methods, new blends of grapes, state-of-the-art technology and other innovations, which were credited ultimately with revolutionizing Italian wine making. His wines developed a more elite reputation, and his fellow vintners began to realize that a few bottles of good wine make more money than jug after jug of ordinary wine. In 1985, Antinori celebrated its 600th year. It employs about 200 people produces some 1.5 million cases of wine annually and earns more than $87 million a year. Although his label already had a reputation for quality Chiantis, Piero made several changes. Against some internal advice, he brought in Giacomo Tacchis, a celebrated enologist, to manage a transition toward higher standards. The company uprooted entire vineyards and revised every step in the winemaking process. The family's traditional wine fields consisted of vines interspersed with other crops, but Piero transformed that and created true vineyards. The Antinoris were willing to adopt new methods and to change their established business, although it involved risk. To evolve, family businesses must be willing to strike off in new directions and face new challenges, despite their legacies. In 1983, Piero and his father boldly sold 49% of the business to Whitbread, a British brewery. The sale funded modernization. In 1990, Piero acquired the famous Piedmontese winery Prunotto and, in 1991, he repurchased the shares in the family's firm. The family demonstrates these family business concepts. Don't try to change everything, but build on the good decisions of prior generations. Scaling back production and emphasizing quality can often help a family business. Let the new generation tackle new problems. Dividing a family business into multiple enterprises may engender conflict. Partnering with a large corporation can be useful, even if you do it temporarily. The Antinori firm's future depends on another untraditional turn of events. Piero's three daughters, Albira, Allegra, and Alessia, are poised to take over its leadership someday. Albira, the eldest, has been managing director of the Piedmontese winery Prunotto since 1995, and has doubled both its profits and its production. Given the Italian corporate community's traditional old-world culture, 
Questions remain about exactly how the transition will go, though the Antinori dynasty appears prepared to prosper for many years to come. Here, as demonstrated by many family businesses, a male relative is no longer seen as the automatic heir. Teams of siblings are a popular new form of business leadership, and family companies are now governed by all kinds of partnerships among relatives. Case history, Beretta pistols, computerized or custom-made. The Italian company, Fabrica di Armi Pietro Beretta, traces its history to Bartolomeo Beretta, a builder of gun barrels who founded the small town company in 1526. Steeped in history, the company supplied gun barrels to the former Republic of Venice, relying on rich veins of iron ore in the foothills of the Italian Alps. Napoleon depended upon Beretta firearms during his march through Europe, an example Mussolini tried but failed to emulate during World War II. Beretta equipped U.S. soldiers during the Persian Gulf War and it makes the official handgun of the French gendarmes, the Italian Carabinieri and the Texas Rangers. James Bond concealed a Beretta in most of Ian Fleming's spy thrillers, and Mel Gibson used one to blaze away at bad guys in Lethal Weapon. Today, the family's 14th and 15th generations lead Beretta, which identifies itself as the world's oldest industrial firm. Annual sales exceed $260 million. The company now has 1,300 employees, but it dramatically reduced its labor needs, and tripled its production in the 1990s by adding more computer technology to its manufacturing process, a daring move at the time. Although the Berettas expect that someday the gun making process will be almost totally automated, the company is not solely focused on technology. Half a mile from the main plant, Beretta artisans still make guns by hand. Clients can watch as skilled employees custom design guns for them, fitting on individually chosen ornate grips and stocks. According to family patriarch Hugo Beretta, a family business must streamline and be ready to react speedily to change. Decision makers, he says, should rely on good common sense and must never compromise quality for growth. The Beretta firm's history and development reflects the family's motto, prudence and audacity. The company has renewed itself, relying on cutting-edge technology, responsibility to the community, cooperation among siblings, loyalty among employees and buono senso, or common sense. Case history, Shirley Plantation, a harvest of history. If you leave the Virginia Tidewaters Colonial Williamsburg and travel west on Route 5, you may feel as if you are journeying back in time. The rolling hills along the James River evoke plantation-era images of a land whose history spans the pre-revolutionary war period, and the Civil War. There on Route 5 stands Virginia's most venerable plantation. The oldest family-run enterprise on American soil, Shirley Plantation dates back to 1613. It was formally founded in 1638 by Edward Hill of Charles City, Virginia who served briefly as acting governor of Maryland. In the early 1700s, wealthy London, trained attorney John Carter, often called the richest man in colonial America, married into the Hill family, launching an early American dynasty. Carter's granddaughter and married light horse Harry Lee, who became Virginia's governor. Their fourth son, Robert E. Lee, born in 1807, led the South into battle in the Civil War. The Carter family still owns the plantation. Today Shirley Plantation is a tourism center, known for weddings and corporate retreats, and a working farm, growing cotton, soybeans, wheat and corn, as well as raising horses and other livestock. Each year, some 50,000 visitors tour the bucolic grounds where slaves toiled before the Civil War. Shirley Plantation's success rests on willingness to reinvent itself, the values of its guiding family the fair division of responsibility among siblings, sound succession planning and openness to female leadership. Case History, Molson Incorporated, Brewing Beer Canadian Style John Molson founded Molson Incorporated, Canada's oldest family-controlled firm, in Montreal in 1786. When he bought his first load of barley, he noted the occasion in his diary with the words, My commencement on the grand stage of the world. The world has watched his family's achievements ever since. Today the sixth and seventh generations run this famous Canadian brewery, which still follows its historic motto, industry and hope. Many consider the Molsons to be Canada's first family, somewhat akin to the Kennedys in the US worldwide, 
customers enjoy Molson Canadian, Molson Golden Ale and Molson Export. Even though the family has been involved in industries as varied as lumber, chemicals and railroads, and it now owns the Montreal Canadiens National Hockey League team, its primary business focus has always been and still is making, selling and distributing quality beer. The company, which still remains under family control, went public in 1945. Taking advantage of the boom years following World War II, it expanded west to Toronto, and built a state-of-the-art brewery along Lake Ontario in 1955. The Molsons believe their family name stands for quality. Their heartfelt goal of continual quality improvement may account for the conservative, self-effacing nature of most family members. While they cannot afford to be sentimental about the past, they recognize the need to build upon it, and to change. Valuable examples from their legacy include The founder avoided internal family conflict by skipping a generation and conveying ownership to a grandson. Ownership was limited to a select number of family members. The company gave non-family executives control over day-to-day -day operations. The family developed a code of conduct. They maintained a fiscally conservative approach to business. Life lessons from family businesses. These venerable, successful family businesses and others like them, reflect 11 core attributes. 1. A family that's united. 2. A product that addresses basic human needs. 3. Primogeniture, that is, the right of the eldest child, particularly the eldest son, to inherit the parent's estate. 4. A positive role for women, despite primogeniture. 5. A shared commitment to continue the company legacy. 6. Adoption as a tool to perpetuate family ownership. 7. A willingness to put the business before the family. 8. A sense of obligation toward serving the community and the customer. 9. An ability to management conflict effectively. 10. The tendency to put plans in writing. 11. A clear system of governance. Together, these 11 principles form a sound foundation for family firms that cherish longevity. Though each family firm wouldn't necessarily claim every value listed here, their most common central attributes appear to be family unity and commitment to their legacies.